What's good? <clears throat> let's get into these. Uh, let's get into these calves this morning. Whoo, boy, we got a lot to talk about with these calves. Yes, sir. A lot, a lot. Yes, sir, where you want to start? I'm gonna let you pop it off. Let's start with the game last night against okay. Toronto. All right. Well, my thing is this, man. When you look at the way um, the Cavs been playing over the last, uh, I say, three three games and whatnot, <clears throat> you're starting to see um, like they age. Like age is really playing a a, a big factor, and um, but I think the main factor is um, they defense. Defense is probably they have the 28th worst ranked defense in the league. And um, when you're playing up against contenders, you know it's gonna it it's gonna be tough for you to beat these contenders on a on a on a night in night out basis. And um, I was watching I was watching the game last night against Toronto, and I seen you know like they didn't play with Kyle Lowry. Toronto didn't play with Kyle Lowry, or Toronto didn't have uh, Serge Ibaka. But these young guys from out of nowhere came in. Like they just ran the game, like to like they bust the game wide open by the, like by halftime, like the game was bust wide open. It's because they got fresh legs, they got young legs, and <clears throat> you got uh, these players that play for Cleveland. It's like I said, it's like they one dimensional players, and uh, when you look at a player like uh, like Isaiah Thomas and whatnot, you know, like he gonna only give you. Uh, one dimension, and that's going to be from the offensive end. So if he ain't scoring, he ain't really helping you at all. Yeah, he's basically, um, he basically more of a liability than us. You know, like he was a negative 20. His over-under last night was negative 20. So, and he only had four points, two rebounds, three assists. So, they probably could have done better with uh, – the Carter Ron probably could have did better than that. Exactly. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Carteron could have did a whole lot better than that. You know what I mean? Because it was at one point where uh, Isaiah Thomas was like, he was like 0 for 10. He yeah, was 0 he for shot, 10. Uh, he shot horrible from the field last night. Oh, yeah. He shot horrendous. You see what I'm saying? But the he, shot two for, he shot 2 for 15 last night. 2 for 15, man. And, 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 like, and like, I don't want to hear something. Like, I don't want to hear shit about – he don't got his legs up under him or whatever because the last couple of games that he didn't play, he didn't actually went off. You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> but so it's like you can't use you can't use thing shit like that to like to like to like as your advantage when you are a, a LeBron fan, a Cavs fan. They're like, oh yeah, he haven't got his legs up under him Yo, when he already won the games prior. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And another thing though is that whole. Not having a ball in his hands as as much as he used to because that's another that's thing that is that's they got many used to be ball dominant players like Wade was ball dominant, Brian is ball dominant, Isaiah Thomas is ball dominant. You know, and Love used to be ball dominant. You know, they got they four they best players used to have. And look how long players. it took Kevin Love to get adjusted to that. You see what I'm saying? It took him what two. Three seasons, two, three seasons to some three seasons. Not even, not even yeah. really get adjusted. But it really wasn't that. Honestly, he really didn't get adjusted. What it was, when the Cavs didn't have that third dimension, you know, when they didn't have Kyrie, they didn't have that, that extra player that make them, you know, a super team, they had to look, they had to utilize love. So that's why it seemed like, oh, he, he good. It ain't that he good. It's that it's not that other person that's taking. 20 shots or not. Exactly. That's what it is. So he was exactly. forced, he was forced to be in the mix a little bit more. So he getting more looks, he getting more touches. There's giving him the ball where he actually wanted that. He's not a stretch four. He's a four that can make threes. Like people keep thinking he's not Ryan Anderson. Like he right. played <laughs> right. and can make threes. He's not a player that just feel comfortable just shooting threes the whole game. Like that's not how he. That's not what he does. Ryan Anderson literally don't have to. You could put, uh, uh you could put uh, a shock on Ryan Anderson. He'll never step inside the three point line. He's fine with it. He, he can stay out there. He can go from three point line to three point line all game. He's good. 
Right. No, yeah. for real. You know what I mean? But and then you, you look, look at it. Go ahead. No, like no, like I was gonna say, see, one of the main adjustments, look, man, look, I'm gonna tell you just like this. Like one of the main things when you looked at the game last night is what like what I've been saying all all season is gonna be uh the Cavs down point. Right. Like, yeah. Uh what was you saying? Like I was saying, like when you really get into it, like <clears throat> all season, like they try to make players comfortable where they're not comfortable, or 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 where they're not used to playing. It's like they're not used to playing a certain role. So when you look at uh, Kevin Love, Kevin Love ain't used to playing center. You see what I'm saying? Isaiah uh, Thomas not used to playing right. off the ball. And when you look at the game last night, you got my man uh, from Toronto, like the young cat. Uh, I, like I don't know how to pronounce his first or second name, but uh, uh, Sakim, whatever Sakim, you had like mm -hmm. the young guy Sakim, like the African guy, get down on Kevin Love last night. You know what I mean? It's like Sakim has sixteen and eight, four assists, one steal. He was seventy percent from the field, seven to ten. While Kevin Love on the other end, Kevin Love only had ten points, nine boards, but he was two for eight from the field. You see what I'm saying? And if you watched the game last night, you saw, like, how my man was getting at Kevin Love. I'm talking about every time he get the ball, it's like he was pump faking Kevin Love, getting straight to the rack. <coughs> Excuse me. Like, doing doing what he had to do. And like I'm saying, it's like Kevin Love is placed in a real awkward position, I think, going forth. Because, you know, like, Kevin Love is a great player, but Kevin Love is a stretch four. He's not a center. So when you're playing against these teams – you know, to have the centers, it's going to really hurt him. And just like with uh, Isaac Thomas, he's starting to play off the ball more because LeBron likes to be ball dominant. LeBron ain't about to play off no damn ball. That's the whole situation of, of, of Kyrie wanting to leave Cleveland in the first place. You see what I'm saying? Because Kyrie wasn't able to dictate, you know what I mean, the floor of the game as he a point really, guard. He, he, LeBron, 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 LeBron turned your point guard into your two guard. Like, he really your oh, point yeah. guard. It, Exactly, exactly. You know what it's I mean? Like but they, they, they want to get mad at the point guard. They want to get mad at uh, at Kyrie for not doing his job. But how can you get mad at Kyrie for not doing his job when LeBron taking his job away from him? So it's the same thing with Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas' uh, job in Boston is going to look completely different to, to, to how it mm -hmm. looks. And you see what I'm saying? He's going to have to be a wing knockdown shooter. You see what I'm saying? Like that's what he's gonna have to become. And I don't think I was he's honest. not looking he's not looking um effective at all offensively, like not at all. Not at all. Mm -hmm. It's just like he had a couple games to where it's like it's like I said, he had a couple games to where he looked pretty good. You know, like even mm -hmm. like that loss against Minnesota, I don't think he played horrible. You see what I'm saying? I don't think he played horrible. But you know, it's just like it's just still his his effectiveness. You know. So what what you think? What you think would be a, a a remedy to the to the cast problem? You think it's the way they play, or you think it's just a roster not fit for what they're going to no, need? No, he did play horrible against what's that, huh? I said, what? So what you think would be a fix for the cast? You think it's the roster itself, or you think it's just like how they play? You know, they rotations and all uh, that. Uh, I think. I think it's I think it's the way they play. Like the Cavs don't have a system. The Cavs don't have a system, man. And uh it's that your turn, my turn system. And that system I think, is the system. I think it's just that is LeBron and got so accustomed to beating teams with talent. You know, he was just always yeah. like in Miami, he just had more talent. You he know, just had so more talent. Yep. The talent going most talented team gonna win nine times out of ten. Exactly. And I swear, I swear the the the, the most uh, Nostradamus uh, prediction I ever made in basketball might have been uh, when Miami first teamed up. The first, what I say, Ray, I said he better get all the championships he can before the then NBA adjusts. Yep. And it looked like the NBA then finally adjusted to adjusted the point to where there's multiple teams that kind of you know what I'm saying that can compete and beat. The Cavs or whatever team LeBron on. 
Because first it was just the Spurs, right? It was the, right. really the only team. Then it became the Spurs and Golden State. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now it's the Spurs, Golden State, Houston. And this right. year, it's looking like the Spurs, Golden State, Houston, Toronto, Boston, Minnesota. OKC. OKC, you know what I'm saying? It's looking like, you know, I mean, they haven't, have they played? I don't think they played OKC yet, but. No, they haven't played OKC yet. They haven't played them yeah, yet. So we have to wait for it. And I just think that's what it is. I think, I think, and I think the lack of building a team organically come back to bite you when you're looking at teams that got a full mix. Because if you look at every championship pedigree franchise and team, they got old, prime and young all yep. the Cavs got is old ain't That's no it. young youthful it's either like who in they like what name one play it's not one player on the Cavs is in their prime mm, nope it's not one player it's not one player for the Cavs that's like playing for an NBA name, like who am I? So I'm about to show y'all who I am. It's not one player. The only player they really got a you got a bunch of over two old overpaid players. Tristan getting 86 to come off the bench. And they not utilize and I think what it is with JR, he a rhythm player. If he not getting shots, he not go he gonna be off. Yes, he's not like, right. he's not he's not like Kyle Corver is like Kyle Corver can literally play three minutes and make seven threes if he get enough touches. He is that kind of shooter. J.R. Smith right. is a streaky rhythm player. He needs yeah. touches. He needs to have the ball. He needs to touch the ball to be effective. He needs to touch the ball to be effective. Yeah. He do. And, and I feel like they've been They've been going away from him. He don't really get no, no – he don't get as many shots as he was getting previously. Yeah, just like last night, last night, Jr. last night, Jr. took five shots, and he was 0 for 5 last night. Right. Jr. need more than five shots. Saying? Oh, yeah, he need way more than five he shots. Get him going. He need at least – I'm sorry, Jr. Smith need at least 10 shots tonight. At least 10 at shots least, tonight to be at effective. At least 10 shots. At least try because to find a – uh, Because the uh, thing really? is – when he get going, he can be that person that can get – he can be in a shootout with you. He can help you get through a shootout. Yeah, but, like, yeah, but like think about the game against Minnesota. He pretty much the same way. Shit, he was 0 for 7 against Minnesota. You see what I'm saying? So he, he was he been on a, he been on a, He been on a slump all season, though. He been on a slump, dog, 0 for 5. But this is yeah, I mean, another thing, though. This is another thing, though. I'm telling you, a lot of this stuff going on in the NBA, bro, is all adjustments to the moves LeBron made. It just took years for the adjustments. I'm going to give yeah. you an example. Miami, right? That's when right. he started all these shooters around him. Shooter yeah. Yeah, but what I was saying, though, it's like the difference is in the league now, it's like the best players making the threes. Right. Step, Durant, Hard. LeBron got to depend on his role players to make threes. But he the one really started the whole wave of it being a three-point shooting lead. Right. That's how you had right. to beat him. You know what I'm saying? You got to remember, every team that beat LeBron has always been a shooting team. Dallas broke a finals record. Dallas did. You know what I'm saying? Dallas broke a finals record. Yeah. San Antonio did. San Antonio, Golden State. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So then that set the tone. Like, okay, this is what we got to do. This is the, the pedigree. And everybody just been, been, you know, you can't get mad at people copying the pedigree. So I think that's, that's another reason why the Cavs having trouble. Because you got to – you. it's hard to – how your role players outduel somebody else's stars? Real shit. You know what I'm saying it's Real shit. depend on them for that. So yeah, man, the Cavs though, bro. They they mm -mm. 
it ain't looking good for them. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and put it out there. They might not get out the East this year. Man, listen, I said from the beginning of the year that the Cavs weren't coming out the East. And unless the rest of you change in the second half of the season, I'm on record for saying the Cavs might not make it out the East. Real shit. I'm saying so. You got anything else you want to add? Um, you know, like the you know, like the main thing is, it's like what I'm gonna keep saying is, it's like I know, like this whole DeAndre Jordan talk, you know, that um, you know, a lot of people think is like you know that that's gonna be like they savior because mm-hmm. of his uh, just because his interior presence. And whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I think DeAndre Jordan averaging like 15 boards a game. He averaging one block a game. Mm-hmm. You know, but that's not what they need. It is what they need because, it is, you know, I mean, like the have- second chance point. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Like, the, you know, to get 15 boards, you get a second chance points. And uh, I don't know how many uh, um, offensive boards he getting and, and, and whatnot. But at the end of the day, it would, like, it will help. But now, at the end, of, but that's not where they. Toronto made eighteen threes last night. They made eighteen threes, right? Eighteen threes. That's all. That's all perimeter defense, man. That's what I'm saying. It's all perimeter. They don't have no perimeter lockdown players. Like they don't have not one player on that team that you can look at and say he gonna shut that guy down from getting a certain amount of points or he can shut this guy down and make his day a living hell or whatever the situation is. It's just like they main thing is perimeter defense oriented. It's not about, you know, uh, blocking shots and altering shots, which that will help. But the 18 threes or you look at the threes that like Minnesota was taking when they popped their heads. Four points, just threes. Right? That's half the- Damn near half of Cleveland's total points. Cleveland only yep. put up 99 points. Toronto did half of that with threes. Shit. Shit. Minnesota, Minnesota, when they beat them, Minnesota hit 10 threes that night. And listen, this is how I show that the Cavs live and, by, by, live and die by the three. They shot six for 26. Ooh, they shot 26 threes. God, Jesus. They made six of them. DeAndre Jordan can't help with that. Now, De- DeAndre Jordan can help with some of them second possessions they was getting. 26? They shot 26. Dog, they live and die by the three. It's so funny because you don't have nobody on that team that could just really go ham from three unless you're talking about Kevin Love can shoot it, Kyle Colford can shoot it. You see what I'm saying? I was the time is streaky. But other than that, it's just like, you know, like you like you really don't got nobody who could just get down and dirty and just go ham. It's just like. I keep looking at, like you said, like they shot 26 threes, 26 or 28 threes against against uh, Toronto last night. Mm-hmm. And you go back to the loss where they lost by 28 against Minnesota. They shot 38. They shot 38 threes, dog. 38 attempts. Yeah. That shit is retarded. You see what I'm saying? Another thing, all a three-point shooters – Except possibly J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith, yeah. By, you know, trying to give benefit of the doubt, or liability on defense. Liability on defense. Liability. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? J.R. Just... J. J. Smith, no lockup defender, but I wouldn't. He's not no lockup defender, but he. In the liability category. We not no, gonna... hell no. Hell no. Over. Hell no. And plus, Jay Crowder, not a good three point shooter. No way. Not consistently, no. He's streaky. Right. Oh, super streaky. Super streaky. You know what I mean? Tell me like he one of them type of guys here. Tell me like he had made one of five or one of four or some shit like that. He ain't gonna really take a uh, 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 su- substantial uh, amount of three pointers. But you know, like he, you know, like you know, like he'll try. He'll try though. But you know, mm-hmm. like you know, he ain't one of them type niggas like that. But when you look at um. Jeff Green is another one when it really come to mind. Jeff Green is another guy. You see what I'm saying? Like Jeff Green take take threes. Like he can knock them boys down from time to time. 
You feel I, me? I, but I, Jeff Green not a liability on defense either. I, I, but think, he's not a- I think I think he need to play more because he he one of the few players that can be effective on both ends of the court. True. He can True. score. And he can play D. Let's just keep it funky. The only reason he over there is because LeBron don't want to guard Durant. Yup. Period. Let's just keep it. That's what he's there for. He the upgrade. He the upgrade to Richard Jefferson. Yeah. Yep. Saw, the upgrade to River, Richard Jefferson because it looked real bad when you got old man Richard guarding Durant and you ain't even guarding him. It looked even worse than it do anyway. Yeah. Exactly. So. Exactly. Oh yeah, so but like he needs to, he needs to, he needs to mo- no doubt play more minutes because him playing 25, 26 minutes or some shit like that ain't gonna cut it. He need to be playing thirty something minutes a game. This way, it come, down, this way it come down to. It's like it's always what I say. It's not about how much that you have. It's about it's how you use it, optimizing it. And the problem yep. is all their talent is on top of each other. Everybody, you got, we got Wade and Jr. and Shump all the same position. All they put the same, yep. Uh, Derrick Rose, Carteron, all the same position. You know what I'm saying? Brian is Brian. You, I'm playing 40 minutes, so who, who back me up don't matter. Nope. Kevin Love, Tristan Thompson, play the same position. Yep. They don't even have a center, for real. They got two power you know fours. Exactly. You got two power fours. <laughs> That's why I hope that deal – with DeAndre Jordan to go, don't go through, man. Because when I've been reading up on it, they've been saying the Milwaukee is a Milwaukee. Place. Milwaukee would be a great destination for him. Milwaukee would be a great destination for him, man. Um, because it's like I said, like if you can see him and Giannis, him and Giannis together. Oh my God, man! That is because it's like a Milwaukee pretty decent uh, on the perimeter as of as a defensive team. But it's like I said, it's like I don't know who like who they'd be giving up and whatnot, but I think it'd be straight. You know what I mean? It's just like I think it'd be another team in the East that can rival against Cleveland. And that's what you need, man. You need parity. Like you need other teams that's in the league on in that conference that can battle that team, man. Make it interesting. Don't forget, uh Bari, Jabari should be coming back. Yeah, right. So, he should be coming back soon. He, he coming off ACL, so it's not uh-huh. how much he going to be able to get you. But, you know, that's still another body. So, you know, that'll, that'll definitely uh, help. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, that's that. You got anything else for us today? I think I'm about to so far, I can't Huh? I said I think I'm about all set as far as any, any other thing. I think I can talk about these these ca- morning. Yeah, um, Boston. You know, like um, I like the way that Boston playing too, man. Like honestly, I, like I love the way that they. You know, Kyrie. Kyrie really showing is that you know, like Kyrie really showing that he a. Uh, um, Kyrie really showing that like he's becoming a leader, and and that you know because at the beginning of the season, people were so hard on Kyrie saying that like Kyrie don't know how to be a leader. Kyrie wouldn't take Boston further, uh, uh, further than what Isaiah Thomas did, and all the type of shit. Like if if Kyrie ain't that guy, you it, like you know, and that's something that I never really understood. Like Kyrie not that guy. It was like, well, that's the same guy that helped LeBron win a championship in Cleveland. And it's like I keep saying at the end of the day, it's just like I like the way that Boston whole team is 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 formatted. Cause, you know, like they got a player like Jalen Brown that can do the dirty work and plus my man can score the ball. Like my man actually been uh impressing me because I didn't think he was that good of a scorer. Where uh where like where, like, he's starting to look better and better. Um, Jason Tatum, dog, Jason Tatum looked like a straight monster, dog. Like, as a rookie, my man said, like, he one of the most polished rookies 
that's in the league is as you know, like one of one of the most polished rookies. Because whenever Jason Tatum shoots the ball, I feel like the ball going in. You know, so uh, you think you think Boston ready to make that next step? Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Like no doubt. I think they ready. Like they beyond ready. It just I feel like this is where it really comes to it is. When you look at, like, the teams in the East that's going to contend, I feel like it's only two teams. And I feel like it'll be three if – I feel like it'll be three if Milwaukee end up getting DeAndre Jordan. But Cleveland and Boston. And like I keep saying, defense win championships, and that's in any sport. You see what I'm saying? Defense win championships, man. And if you can't defend if – if you can't defend – you can't defend, you can't win championships, man, because defense is the anchor of every championship team. Like, that's the pedigree. A defensive staple is always the pedigree. And like I keep saying, is Boston is the defensive team in the right now. They are the top-rated defensive team in the NBA right now. They are number one in, def- in, in defensive efficiency. Is the Boston Celtics. And it's not because of accident. You see what I'm saying? It's because they got a system, man. It's like I'm saying, they got a system. And and it's, and, and Cleveland is the 28th worst defensive team in the league. You know, it wasn't a coincidence why Boston beat Cleveland uh, a couple weeks ago last week. I think it's this new thing with – like okay, if you look, it's like the evolution in a way of the league. It's like before the defensive teams couldn't score. Yeah, you know? and like when the Bulls was good back with Derrick Rose, they they were always with Tom Thibodeau. You know what I'm saying? They kind of like they heyday. They was great right. defensively, but they probably yeah. give you 80 points. Yeah, but you they couldn't know? score. The old four Pistons, they could, they they could, they could, they could put a they if you if they get 90. They're going to keep you to 80. That's the, kind of how they play. You're not going to get 80. All we need is 90 points to win. That's how the old four Pistons would. Now, shoot, teams playing defense and still going to score 100, 120 points. So it's like, shit. So you can't have a weakness. You got to be able to score and you got to be able to play deep. So it's like, you know, it's like a combination. It's like they, they like Phoenix on one end of the court, but then they like, you know what I'm saying? They like the Bulls on the other, the old Bulls on the other end. So it's it's a it's a it's tough if you miss if you lack it in one of those areas to even be able to compete. That's right. why I feel like the Cavs got blew out by them them top of the you know what I'm saying the top of the top of the conference teams because they of all the teams that's that's high in their conference three and up in their conference they're gonna be able to score and they're gonna be able to defend. Right. Oh yeah, it's a lot of problems going on over there in the land. It's a lot. Of, oh yeah, a lot of problems. A lot of problems going on going on over there. So yeah, we might have to talk about Boston. Uh, on another day, we might have to talk about the possibility of Boston being the next one up. You know, but uh, yeah, I think we're gonna leave it at that for the day. All right, cool. You know what I mean? It just, you know, like, I just want to close it off and just say, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, like, I want to see, I want to see uh, on Martin Luther King Day uh, next Monday, next Monday, how the Cavs game? fare against Golden State. I want to see that. Mm. I want to see that. I want to see that because this right here is going to prove to me if they lose by 30 or if they lose by 10, or if they win. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm talking about the Cavs. This mm-hmm. right here is going to prove to me where they stand. Like, you can't keep taking L's. You can't keep taking L's to contenders and then try to overlook it like, hey, it just, it's just January. Mm-hmm. Nah, man. Nah, fuck that. You know what I mean? Like, we got to stop doing that because if that was Golden State, they was going through this turmoil like how they were last year, you know, at the beginning with, uh, like, with Kevin Durant trying to fit him in, it was never this and, bad, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was never this bad, but it just 
Yeah, they, it, was just, it was just being exaggerated. Being worse was like, yeah, yeah, right. It was like a, right, I'm using an example to how people was over-exaggerating. Like, oh, my God, who are they doing? Oh, oh, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. but, but, like, but, like, when it's LeBron, it's kind of a, it's just January. LeBron always going to be there because that's what you're accustomed to because you're accustomed to having LeBron with these stacked teams in this weak-ass conference that can get there. So I just want to see how they going to fare up against Golden State uh, on the 15th of January, Martin Luther King Day, and see how they play. So, right, you know. Well, yeah, we're going to have to come back and talk about that then after that game. So, uh, yeah. All right, cool. All right, we're going to leave it right there. All right, man.